everyone, it's Miranda from Great Garden Plants, and I'm so excited to bring you all to my house today. My fiance and I just bought this house back in March and are just getting started with all the gardening and thought it would be really fun to make a video today using perennials in some patio containers. So we have this patio here in our shaded front area that's basically full shade. So I've picked a few shade tolerant perennials that we can mix and match and make some pretty entryway containers. So join us and I'll show you how and which plants I use and I'll give you all my tips and tricks along the way. All right, so I just found these containers at Lowe's the other day on clearance and I fell in love with them. So I got two of them for each side of my front door. And while I love them so much, there was one problem. They don't have any drainage holes in the bottom. And most people don't really check for drainage holes before they buy containers, but it's really important that you do, especially when you're growing perennials in pots. They grow big, deep root systems that reach all the way to the bottom of your container. And if you're overwatering your plants and there's a lot of water in the bottom of them, they'll get root rot. So it's really important that you either buy ones that have drainage holes in them or you add some yourself. Thankfully, this is plastic, so it'll be pretty easy for me to drill some myself. Perfect. All right, so I've already gone ahead and added some potting mix to each of the planters. And it's really important that you choose potting soil instead of garden soil. So garden soil is normally what you would add as like a topsoil to your garden beds, where potting soil has other elements like perlite and vermiculite that have been added to it to improve the drainage. Okay, now that our planters are all ready, it's finally time to put our plants in. And I've chosen five different shade tolerant perennials that are straight from the greenhouse at Great Garden Plants. I tried to choose ones that have different colored foliage or different textures um, to add some contrast to the containers. So I've chosen two ferns. There's Brilliant's Autumn Fern, which I really love for its green, um, and orange hues on there. So especially in early spring when new fronds are emerging, they're this deep orangey coppery color. They'll fade to this softer green in the summer and then when fall hits again, um, they look pretty brilliant, which is why they're brilliant autumn fern. And then we have the Crested Surf Japanese Painted Fern from Proven Winners. And this one has deep purple stems and silvery green foliage that has these really cool um, like tips that are kind of like a snake's tongue. They divert out into two directions. So it adds a lot of texture there. And these are my two tall elements that I'll add to the container. And then for some shorter elements, I have a barren wart. This one's pretty in pink. So it has these heart shape um, leaves on it that when they're newly emerging, they have coppery reddish hues that go really well with the Brilliant Autumn Fern. And in early spring, they'll have light pink orchid-like flowers on them. So pretty adorable. And then Coral Bells is a mixed container classic. It has this colorful foliage from spring to fall. I think we offer over 20 different colors on our website. So there's always like a perfect pop of color for any container. And then I'm always into trailing plants, whether it's house plants that are vines or perennials that trail through the garden bed, I love them. So I got some Creeping Jenny. This one is the yellow Creeping Jenny that we have um, that should hang nicely over the edge of my container. Okay, so what I always like to do at first, instead of just jumping in and planting them, I'll leave them in their pots and set them on top of the soil just so I can get an idea for the arrangement of them. So since my two ferns are tallest, I'll put those in the back. Or some people will use one tall element and put it directly in the middle of your mixed planters, but these I'll put in the back. And then I have the upper medium here, which gets low and wide. I'll put it off to the side here so it can kind of hang over this side of the container. And then I'll put my coral bells over on this side so it's diagonal from my Brilliant Autumn Fern that have similar colors. And then in the front, I'll be putting my Creeping Jenny. So I'll do that in this container over here and mimic the exact same look in this container as well. We often get asked how many perennials can I fit into one pot? And really it depends on the size of the container that you're using. 
This one's pretty wide and generally what I like to do is feel it out. If I'm putting a bunch of perennials in a pot and it feels like I have to squish them in or I really have to try to get them all to fit, then it's probably one too many plants for your container. However, since this one's pretty big, I have plenty of room and I have no trouble fitting five. If you are using the same mixed perennial container year after year, obviously your plants are gonna grow quite a bit. Once they start to overgrow the container, then you can separate them into new containers and put young plants in this one, or you can just selectively choose your least favorite plants or something that didn't perform well and take them and put them in your bed instead. All right, and just like that, I love the way that this looks so far, so I think I'm ready to plant them. Yay! Okay, so when you're removing your plants from the container, the best way to get them out is to gently pinch the bottom. I don't know if you've noticed I've been doing this for every pot so far. And what it does is it just loosens the roots that are at the bottom there so you can gently tug them out. I always put my hand around the base of the plant and just gently lift. If you feel like you're tugging too much, that means you need to pinch the bottom of your pot a little bit more. And then once you have it out, remove your tag. And then I like to go ahead and massage the roots a bit, so just gently knock them. Um, it kind of stops the roots from growing in a circle if they reach the bottom of the pot there and gets them ready to grow down in your pot. And then there we go. The last thing that they need is some water and some fertilizer, which I don't normally do at first just because there's normally already fertilizer in your potting mix, but after a few weeks or a month or two, I like to go in and give them a little extra boost. So I'll put them where they'll be on my front patio and then water them. These are the mixed containers that are on my patio, but I would love to see the ones that are on yours. Tag us in your pictures or videos of your mixed container plantings and we'll share them on our page. In the meantime, I'll make a collection of my favorite shade tolerant perennials that are great for containers and we'll link it in the description. So make sure you check out our website, go to our blog for more gardening tips and advice, or you can always email us at info at greatgardenplants.com. Thankfully, this is plastic, so it'll be pretty easy for me to drill some myself. Ba, da, 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 da. We'll do some fun music for this part. <laughs> Da, 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 da. 